Welcome to the Music Production Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Funk. You're hearing music right now made with the Super Awesome Sounds Ableton Live Pack. This is a collection of instruments made with samples of the Casio SA20 synthesizer. This sort of old school toy keyboard has got some really cool sounds in it. Um, Each note of each patch was sampled and built into these really cool Ableton Live racks. There's also 30 or so audio effect racks you can use on any kind of music you want. You can check this pack out by going to my site, brianfunk.com. If you are a member of the Music Production Club, you get this right now as part of your membership during the month of April 2020. You can pick it up at the store or you can get a free version of just five sounds so you can get a taste of what this is all about. So check out Super Awesome Sounds, brianfunk.com. On today's show, I have Laura Escaday. Laura is doing a lot, really. Um, It's almost hard to say where to start with you, Laura. (laughs) Um, From playback on major concerts to um, the Transmute Accelerator and Master Track Worldwide, Creative Business Intensive, uh, live streams, tutorials. um, You're kind of everywhere these days. And it's good to have you back on the show for a second time. Thank you so much, Brian. It's good to be back. Yeah, it is. It's nice to see you. And uh, we're in like a crazy time and you've been really um, pulling it together and hustling to um, help people out with that lately. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we got word of all this COVID stuff, I just uh, had to switch gears a little bit with my business and Mm. And everything and of course no concert tours happening for the foreseeable future so um you know i've been doing education stuff for a long time and now i've just really doubled down on it to just help as many people to get through this time and learn some things in the process and us all evolve together yeah yeah i know um it's it's been especially hard on the live show uh, industry, the world really. And, um, you are such a big part, you and your company, excuse me, for like, um, running these shows for so many major artists. So I know this has been, you know, particularly hard for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it it has definitely, um, I think over the, as everyone had their work dry up very quickly, it was like, over the course of a couple of days, had to make some pretty tough decisions when, you know, the tours started getting canceled. But, you know, I have hope and faith that on the other side of this, they'll, they'll start up again, just don't know when. So mm-hmm. now we're just doing a lot more um, online education stuff and um, music stuff and performing online and we're all online so <laughs> yeah yeah it's cool you've done some really nice things with uh, the fellow certified ableton certified trainers and it's been nice to get the yeah. gang together because i know we were all kind of hoping to see each other at loop and yep. that got called off and um i think that's like something we're, you know we're all kind of missing and yeah so it's been nice to see you get the gang together and uh put on those those zoom calls with everybody yeah, it's been it's been really fun. I think the one benefit of this time right now is that we have more time to connect and uh we're all trying to figure out a lot of the same things and we're all live streaming and we're all super big nerds about taking it to the next level in terms of <laughs> our offerings and so uh, I just had the idea to get us together once a week and we've done I think we've done five meetups now and we're we're actually live streaming them now on my YouTube or my personal Facebook on Saturday mornings at 11 Pacific time. So um, it's been super fun to just see who pops in from all around the world, from you know LA to New York to Sweden to Israel, it's Singapore, um, lots of good folks with uh, such great knowledge and everyone just willing to share and, and help one another, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is a great community and um, it's, it's, uh, I hope this is something that kind of like is, you know, a result of this whole thing is that something like that sticks around that we can keep a, that those lines of communication open like that. Same, same yeah. here. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I actually wasn't supposed to be going to loop this year. So, uh, I do play back on American Idol and it, typically would be American Idol season right now. So, Mm. um, I wasn't going to be going to loop, but 
now that American Idol is not happening for me, um, I get to organize these fun hangouts for mm. everyone and been doing a lot of organizing of fun hangouts, not only with the certified trainers community, but uh, different musicians and artists and uh, all across the board over the past month or so. I think I've done about like 20 free master classes and if you go to my website, you can watch some of the replays, but just really helping people to level up their live streaming skills, their online performance skills and things like that. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. Um, it's a big help for everybody and, and people are into it and want to know how to do it. And I know um, I am too, like interested, like I've kind of been doing the same like meager video setup for a long time. Uh, the only trouble is like, uh, it's so hard to get your hands on any of this stuff now, <laughs> any of the gear, it's all like yeah. uh, sold out and everything. It hmm. is. I mean, I actually kind of started nerding out on this stuff about two years ago. Um, so I had already bought like all of the gear and now I'm really just putting it into to practice and putting it into play, which is which is nice. So I'm just learning new ways to kind of connect it all and and get it to sound good. But yeah, it's uh, I'm glad that I I went pretty far into the online setup world when I did because, like you said, getting things right now is is kind of impossible. I do have a Black Magic ATEM Mini. Uh, that's on back order that I'm waiting for right now. I think a lot of people are waiting for that that piece of gear to come in so we can do our... Is that like the our... camera sh switcher? The, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it looks pretty sweet and it's a good price point, so... Well, I think this is going to like help turn a lot of people into like a little TV studio. You know, like the Absolutely. quality has definitely already been like uh, noticeably better in just a Absolutely. month. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I've really been trying to help artists as much as possible to get a really good sounding setup with what they have. And, you know, I think there's a fine line because a lot of, like you said, you can't get a lot of this gear and, you know, people don't have the resources right now to purchase things either. So um, I th I'm a big believer in just making the most with what you have. And, and no matter if it's just your phone, mm. um, if you're going live on Instagram and you're just using your phone, it's, it's all good. Just as long as you're getting your, your art out there and expressing yourself. And so, you know, it's not necessary to have all the, the big fancy gear, although it's, it's fun to have all the fancy gear, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to hear you say that because I mean, your work is like in the, uh, you know, the, at the highest level, really like touring with Kanye West, like you, of course you, you have access to, um, top of the line, everything I'm sure. And, um, th I know I've seen like some of your setups, uh, the redundancies and like, I mean, really like you've, you've really like covered every base. So I think it's something like sometimes people see that and feel like, Oh, I'm all I have is this or that, but, um, you can really get a lot done with, um, really anything you have, like like you said, even just your phone is such an amazingly powerful tool. And I, I I always try to encourage people the same thing. Like, don't let that be your reason or your excuse. Totally. Yeah. I I, I definitely agree. That just go ahead and, and do it. Just put it out there. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. what it sounds like or, or looks like just as long as you're creating. Yeah. So... Um, you've got some big things coming up. We wanted to like kind of get this in so we could let people know because um, you're running some cool workshops and uh, courses. I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology here for you, but yeah, yeah, um, course. <laughs> like some, some really intense stuff where you're sharing some great knowledge and um, I'd like to get into that a little bit, you know, early in the show so like people can understand what to check out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, so when I mentioned that I had gotten into the online space um, about two years ago, I created my first online course or program called the Transmute Accelerator. And it was born out of an idea that I had for a retreat called the Transmute Retreat. Mm. And I, after touring for so many years with Kanye and other artists, I 
decided to switch gears a bit and and start helping independent artists with their live performances and their setups and showing them what to do and how I do things and helping them to achieve their goals and to be able to be in complete control on stage and not have to rely on anyone else because you know there's a lot of artists out there that are vocalists or instrumentalists and they might have a band uh, they might not have control over what songs are playing or what it sounds like and not know how to express themselves and use things like controllers and effects and all that good stuff. And so um, I created the Transmute Accelerator online so they could reach people from all over the world. And the, the first iteration, we had people from Singapore and Slovenia and um, we had people from Barcelona and Panama City. I mean, it was really just like, all over the world and i've been so amazed at the progress that these artists have made in their their live performances from literally going from not really having a show to rocking controllers out on stage Mm. and just like completely being one with their gear and so it's really my goal with transmute to accelerate just like the name says a process um, where they just start from the beginning envision their show they design it with me and then they perform it we've got performances online throughout the program and so it's neat that it was already online and now i'm offering it for the third time and now it's even more meta because it's about performing online online (laughs) (laughs) so um all of the the work that i've been doing to um create high quality live streams um, and learn about all that stuff in the past year as well as in the course. And um, it's a two month course. And every week you meet with me and the the group of people from all over the world and just the camaraderie and the, 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 the people that have been in the groups, the support, the accountability, it really is just a, a special thing to me. And I'm just thankful that I've been able to, have the people in the program that I've had in there. I've had uh, people like Clint Mansell, who is a composer for Drive and Solaris and used to be in the Red Hot Chili Peppers and um, artists like Aluna George. She did my Transmute Retreat and then she became a one-woman show and was performing. So uh, as well as a bunch of other incredible artists that are on the come up and on the rise that are, have seen their bookings increase and and also now they're performing online and and Mm. using all the tools and tricks from transmute so yeah it's it's pretty fun i i really enjoy teaching and i enjoy people uh, helping people go through the process Mm. yeah you, you said a lot of things that i actually appreciate about doing the berkeley online class that i do um, yeah. the camaraderie, you know, like sharing, meeting, like once a week we meet in like a little video class. And, um, I, I always enjoy it. Like uh, on my, and even just like my own education and growth is a big part of that enjoyment because so many people are doing so many cool things and coming from all different works of life and different parts of the music industry. I'm sure you're seeing all that. Um, you know, like you said, member of the chili peppers so like um you're getting like um a lot of different interesting people and that's that's part of the draw i would say too absolutely yeah and and like i said you know the levels of the people that are in the program are range but everyone's just got that same hunger and passion for learning Mm. and i just and i love that and um the one the transmute that's coming up it starts may 4th and um, I've been doing a lot of master classes over the, like I said, over the past month, uh, teaching some of these tools and techniques um, that I'm utilizing in Transmute. And already the group of people that we have that have uh, enrolled in Transmute are just some really incredible artists and musicians. And it's very interesting to see kind of what people are doing in this time, you know, because. Mm it's like a, it's like a range, right? There is a range from people. Some people are just, they need to rest, you know, they just really need to rest and they need to relax and they've just been, you know, going so hard. And this is a really good time for them to like revive themselves and rejuvenate. 
there's a lot of people that, you know, aren't doing so well, you know, health wise and just really need to focus on their health. And, you know, and I totally understand that right now we all need to focus on our health and, and wellness and well being. And, you know, that's a big part of why I created Transmeet in the first place is because I had a massive health breakdown four years ago and was in the hospital and it's a whole story. I, I wrote an article called Hustle Healthier. It's yeah. on Medium that you can read about it. Um, but after that, I I created the Transmute brand to transform energy from one space to another space. It's really just about our own personal transformations and um, personal growth. And so I just keep adding to, to that. I mean, I just keep adding to what that means to me and adding resources and tools and tips and uh, ways that my community can benefit from uh, discovering more self-care and, and awareness and self-awareness and, and connection with others. And that's really what the Transmute brand is all about. Hmm. Yeah, that article was was really good and and like um honest and open and um and i think it's a really important message for people to hear because you know like there is this like um it's like a society thing i guess where we just hard work hard work the grind hustle and um Mm -hmm. we and that's often at the sacrifice of like some basic health needs exercise sleep diet and um you know, you, you speak a lot about that. And, um, I was kind of like curious, um, to ask you how going through that and, um, prepare how, how has that like prepared you for now? Because this is another situation I think we're all in it's high stress and it's weird and we don't have human connection and you can't go to your gym. If that's even something you do, like everybody's life has been just flipped upside down and it's got a physical toll and a mental toll. And that's even if, even if you're not affected by the illness or, or even your job, it still has such a tremendous impact on people. I was kind of curious um, to hear your thoughts about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one is immune either to the virus or knowing someone that has been affected by the virus. And, you know, our economic state right now is just in such disarray. Um, But I really do feel like all of the personal work that I did over the last couple of years prepared me for this because um, I used to have a lot more fear and I used to um, just be play a little bit smaller, uh, for a long time. And you know, I was hiding a lot behind the artists that I was working with and, um, not really believing in myself that I could live the life that I wanted to live. And over the past couple of years, I've just moved more into that and more into, um, operating from a place of joy. And I've just been really more aware of what my joy line is what brings me joy and and how to focus on those things and and uh, find the right people to help me with the things that don't bring me joy but are necessary in life and um, so you know through all this work and the and the the personal work and you know, I went to a retreat with a woman named Byron Katie a couple of years that was a big hmm. uh, life changer for me a lot of thought work and just um, analyzing and letting go of, of thoughts that are causing us stress, which are quite a few of them. So right now when thoughts arise about the current situation or I start thinking about the future, um, future tripping, I call it, Hmm. I just try to, you know, come back to where I am in this moment and just focus on, you know, where I'm at right now and just continually guide my thoughts back to the present moment it's like a meditation you know it's like a a walking meditation Mm. and uh, it's called the work and it's four questions that you ask yourself when you're having thoughts that you uh, are causing you disease or discomfort and so I really feel like the work literally the work that I've done doing the work and other modalities and also meditation and just my, my personal practices have helped prepare me for this time. And I think a few years ago I may have been a lot more fearful, but now I'm really looking at this as an opportunity. Um, I'm looking at this as an opportunity for the world to heal, for us to come together, uh, for our environment, mother nature to heal, 
um, looking at this as, as an opportunity for us to really take stock of who we love and who we want in our life and to stay connected and uh, and also just for growth, you know, for growing and taking those chances, investing in ourselves. You know, I, I just continually invest in myself. Um, I just signed up for, uh, to work with another coach just last week and uh, someone who really resonated with me that I'd been wanting to work with for a long time. And it's like, okay, now is the time I'm doing this, you know? And so um, it's, you know, even if you can't invest or, you know, have a different methodology or, or have a different ways. Like it's just about becoming more of who we are right now and really um, sitting with ourselves and um, going within more. I think it's just that we've been operating very externally. Um, some of us, you know, for a long time. And now it's like, well, no, you got to take a look at what's going on inside yeah. and really sit with that. And, and so I, I'm, just every time I start to kind of have that fear, that fear creeps in about the future, I just remind myself that this is a, a huge opportunity um, for me to create the next phase of my life and to become very clear on what that is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I love to help others to achieve that in their lives as, as much as possible as well. I mean, a lot of the work that I'm doing with Transmute and my different programs are just to inspire um, other artists and creatives to to choose a path and walk a path that makes them happy for themselves and not for anyone else. Hmm. Well, like it or not, we are kind of forced to uh, face ourselves a little bit right now. Like you said, yeah. um, all that external stuff is kind of um, not there. So it, it can be tough. And it, I've, I'm not super familiar with Byron Katie's work, the work, but um, <laughs> I have shown my classes in school a video of hers. And, yeah. I, and I always like that she called it the work because yeah. it, it is work and it does take effort and it's not easy to take stock of yourself and look inward and pay attention to how your mind works. And all of those things are... Um, you know, crucial, like, you know, for all of life, not even just the creative stuff, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Our thoughts uh, cause our suffering, our beliefs, you know, we, when we tune in and, and we really listen to those voices and our self-talk, it's, it's uh, incredible what we can do and how we can change our emotions and our mood just by shifting uh, mm -hmm. the way that we talk to ourselves. Do you have like a meditation practice, like anything that you do on the regular like that? I do. Yeah. I go in and out of doing the work with other people because um, uh, it's really nice to pair up with another person and, and, and sit there and do the work. Um, and then I also just have a silent meditation practice that I do in the mornings. And um, I've also gotten really into Dr. Joe Dispenza and listen to a lot of his meditations. Mm. And so, yeah, just uh, quite a bit, you know, quite a bit of just different modalities. Um, and I have a, a mantra that I uh, was given when I was a, a child. So I um, meditate on the mantra a lot. Mm. Yeah. Are you allowed to tell us that? <laughs> I can't is tell it? you what the word is. No. Oh, okay. Okay. no, I know it's like personal. But the mantra is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you know it was but given it, to me so yeah, yeah. nice um, yeah that's that's more like transcendental meditation right what do you kind mm -hmm. of focus on the mantra yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was a transcendental um meditation workshop that i went to my mom actually took me to it when i was a kid and i did not mm. understand it at all but i never forgot the mantra and when i got older i realized that i really resonated with it so i started using it again it's a really good thing for kids to learn early, I think. Um, Absolutely. I kind of think growing up, um, uh, my experience walking to and from school with my best friend Thomas as, as a kid, we really like got pretty philosophical like for how like crazy the two of us were <laughs> you know silly <laughs> we we had these like we always had these like really like deep introspective walks home and i think it taught me a lot about um 
how your thoughts and the way you interpret things color your reality. I mean, that is your reality, just how you're interpreting everything. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I just feel like really lucky that I had that time for, for whatever reason, that's like how we kind of used it. And um, I just think uh, getting that when you're young is, is important to just kind of pay attention to how your mind works and understand that you're having this like 24 seven conversation with yourself. It's uh, I do, yeah. I do some meditation now with um, Sam Harris's app uh, called waking up. Oh, okay. Which, which I like a lot. It's, they're short and um, it's not, um, it's not, it's not like a religious thing. Sometimes it can be a little bit religious, I guess, but um, anyway, uh, that's not necessarily why, but it's just um, paying attention you know, just noticing yeah. things and, um, noticing when you're, you're, cause I, I would get this a lot as a school teacher where I would kind of like be planning a lesson. I'd be like, well, what am I doing up there? You know, what gives me the right? Like if anyone mm. knew the truth, you know, they'd call yeah. me a fraud and throw me out of there. Right. And, um, I finally kind of started to learn, like, that's just the story I'm telling myself. Yeah. And when it starts to happen, I can like kind of catch myself from going down the whirlpool and um, just say, oh, I'm telling that story again. And to see it mm-hmm. as like a story, it's, it's so much less yeah. harmful. It's lighter. It's a lot lighter when you realize yeah. that it's a story. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us have that imposter syndrome kind of thing going on, yeah. especially, I mean, no matter what level that we're at, you know, I catch myself sometimes and I'm like, wow, I just really went there with myself. (laughs) (laughs) Why? (laughs) Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, I get it with my music too. I'm not formally trained. So like sometimes that'll get in my head. Like, you know, who do you think you are, man? Yeah, yeah. You have a podcast (laughs) on producing music. Like what what gives you the right, (laughs) you know? Right, yeah. It's Yeah, I totally relate to that. 100%. I think, I think everyone does. Everyone's got their, their things, but you know, we're not all supposed to be experts in everything and we're not necessarily supposed to be experts in anything. I mean, I think I'm good at a lot of different things. Am I the best? No, (laughs) but that's okay. Mm. You know, it's, it's okay because I am comfortable with, with the skills that I've amassed and the, the bringing them all together. And that's kind of where I'm at now is just really like, focusing on bringing together the music and the technology and the wellness and the spirituality and and all the different things and pouring all of that into my programs and into helping others you know because that's just what brings me joy Mm. nice yeah it does help to just sort of um be vulnerable and like be okay with it like you Uh, said like to admit it and um because there is also like a you know uh like you, you and you can see it if you go online and watch what people are doing where they're trying to prove themselves all the time and mm-hmm. um, it, it often gets people into trouble but once you as soon as you kind of like admit <laughs> you come yeah. clean you, there's nothing you're not hiding anything anymore totally i mean i felt like that for years you know when i was touring i couldn't be vulnerable i had to pull off insane things every night night after night Mm. um was you know treated in all different kinds of ways from various people who um you know weren't the most positive people to be around in some cases and um yeah it took just going through that to realize that that's not you know how i wanted to operate my life and Mm. that's not who i was and the, their opinions didn't define me, you know, especially it's, it can be a challenge, you know, especially touring at the level that I was at with some of the just, there's an, of course, amazing people around me, but then there'd be those people that were really yeah. negative and, and would try to put you down or bring you down to, to their level. And, um, yeah, I just realized that I was above that and needed to, you know, focus on what brings me joy you know well i think you find a percentage of any population of people is is like that for whatever Absolutely. reason 
Yeah, um, yeah. But it's it it's I started to become more vulnerable because I realized I needed it. Like I I was hiding, and I talk about this in the the hustle healthier article, but I was just very stoic and trying to show that I I had my stuff together, like. You know, I can pull off the craziest things night after night, and I did, and I enjoyed that, and I and I lived for those moments, you know. But the you know the stress of those moments too were just like breaking me down bit by bit. And so when I wrote the article, I just realized, you know, I had to come out and and speak more honestly and openly about my experiences just to help other people um, mm. to realize that they don't need to go down the the same road that I did because touring can be it can eat you alive you know <laughs> it really can if you're not careful it's it's t- it's tough on the body and tough of the mind and the spirit too well yeah. i guess it's it's its own little enclosed world right i mean you're you're mm-hmm. in the same group and you're just like this pod traveling from spot to spot um your mm-hmm. environment is i i mean even though you're in different places you're kind of in the same type of place every time i would assume anyway so it's yeah. same people. Yeah, same people. Mm. Yeah, but you know, it it was also incredibly beautiful at the same time, and had uh, the most amazing experiences. I mean, I got to travel the world and do incredible things with incredible people. So, um, and it's it is all about how you operate in in the lifestyle. You know, you there's choices that you make. You you mm. make the choice to, you know, partake in the partying or the you know. The whatever it is or the, and the not sleeping and the, all of that. And, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's just, you know, important for everyone to realize that you can, you can do that. You just have to also take care of yourself <laughs> right. so that, uh, you can have longevity in it, you know, cause a lot of people just really burn out of, after doing it for a little while and then, mm. you know, don't have the stamina to keep going. Yeah. I bet. Is it yeah. a little bit easier with American Idol? since you're not traveling as much? Yeah, yeah. So um, I haven't been doing much touring in the past four years. I mean, I have been do- still doing shows like I'll do the Grammys or, you know, TV shows or, you know, award shows, things like that. Um, but I really, I mean, I started my company, Electronic Creatives, long before, but I had been training people to, to do the playback work and started training more people because I was turning down more and more work um, and not going on the road as much. So I really started to, to build up my company more and had a few key people from the company um, that I hired, which have really helped me to to grow it. And um, what was available to do shows like American Idol, which is perfect for me because it's a two, two and a half month contract in the spring. And, um, and it's in LA and it's just, it's very, um, uh, you go in at a certain time and you leave at a certain time, which is yeah. great for me because <laughs> with touring, you could go in and then you could be there three days later. Yeah. I mean, literally like <laughs> not sleeping. So, uh, or sleeping on the floor, or, you know, not all the time, but there are definitely those scenarios where just, you, you know, it's you don't know when the artist is coming in. You don't know when you're going to rehearse. Like no one's got any info. So, um, definitely having a more of like a, a job, so to speak with American Idol has been, been awesome. And, um, so I've been doing that. I, I did two seasons of that since the reboot and yeah. And other than that, I've just been performing and doing my music and, um, I call my sound future classical and I've been, uh, performing a show with the Unreal Gaming Engine, um, which is a VR uh, software. And uh, a friend of mine made a design in the Unreal Engine where I can control it with my violin and controllers in real time. So it's it's pretty next level. And um, I'm excited to kind of be able to perform out in the real world again um, with it to show more people what's going on. But yeah, it's, that has been just something that I'm very, very proud of because I don't really know of anyone that's doing uh, anything quite like that. Yeah. I saw you do that a little bit at loop at the, at the presentation you did. Oh uh, uh, yeah. And that was, uh, it was pretty cool to see that starting to happen. And um, the responsiveness of the video to what you did of with your, 
I think guess it was violent, but it seemed like other things were reacting too. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that's, yeah, violin that's controllers. like cool next level stuff. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so I've been doing, working with the Unreal Engine and then I actually was supposed to be performing at um, a, an event called Synthplex, which got postponed till the fall in LA and it was going to be my first performance in quad. Um, oh, so I'm wow. starting to perform in quad as well. I mean, Suzanne Shiani is uh, one of my idols and yeah. I actually met her at loop in Berlin a few years ago and have hung out with her several times. And, um, she's an incredible woman and just inspiration for me. And so I've been working on, um, a quad set. So quad and interactive video, as well as all of my live looping stuff that I do with the violin and, um, a lot of the improv things that I do. So definitely been taking my sound in a different direction, which I'm excited about and been experimenting quite a bit more. Mm. Yeah. It sounds pretty immersive. I guess like if you're there in the audience, you're just going to be surrounded in that case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really cool to be able to create a violin loop and put it in one speaker, then another one and another, and just like have them switch and move and Mm. to be able to control all of that. Um, from the software it's it's a uh, very fun hopefully you, fun for the listener too <laughs> <laughs> are you using uh max for live for that or do yeah you, mm-hmm. okay yeah i'm using the surround surround planner right. okay yeah i have tried um envelop as well and the dolby one mm. um the surround panner is just like very simple so i've just been using that one but there's, there's stuff that's popping up now, definitely. I actually have a little quad set up in my studio now, so um, it's just four speakers, you know, it's very... very I've been, <laughs> I have a set of monitors that I don't really use. Uh, I was thinking ah. of like trying to maybe just, yeah. you know, put them behind me and see what happens. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you, I mean, definitely could. It's, it's fun. And actually, a friend of mine, um, Kamran, who has done a lot of work with quad and he actually produced Suzanne's um, quad album on vinyl. He showed me, he's got this decoder um, plugin, which decodes quad um, from online. And so there's, there's songs on YouTube, which were actually originally recorded in quad Hmm. uh, like Pink Floyd money that song and so he came to my studio and he showed me how to decode that song in quad in my studio and all of a sudden i was hearing the sounds in quad from youtube and it blew my mind it's so incredible so i definitely um really recommend anyone who's interested in quad to to check out his his work yeah i've never heard that it's Uh, like it's it's cyk yeah it's cool yeah yeah, I think his website's psychic, C-Y-K-I-K dot com. But, um... I'll write that down for the show he, notes. Oh, yeah. I got a few of the notes. I might have to ask you a few of them <laughs> afterwards. Of course, of course. I, I'd love to give notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's 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 been, it's been super fun and um, kind of bringing it all together, the, the, you know, the performance and the wellness and all the things. I, I think that's important because um, we forget that so much, you know, and, and you can't perform if you don't have your health, you, you, you know, like right. everything re- relies on that as a prerequisite. So it's good Absolutely. to see that you're doing that. And I'm Thank sure you. a lot of people are benefiting on levels well beyond their music with it too. I think so. I mean, I, I it's an honor to hear that when people tell me that, t- tell me that, you know, cause that's really my intention. I mean, performing is, is an extension of, you know, who we are and, um, expressing ourselves. And I really feel like technology helps us to express these limiting beliefs, right. Mm. Uh, to, to overcome limiting beliefs that we might have. Like, so for example, tools like auto tune, um, I used to hate on auto tune back in the day. Cause I was like, well, if you can't sing, then why are you going to use, <laughs> you know, a, a plugin and this and that. And then I worked with Kanye and other artists and I realized that they were able to express themselves, mm. um, and sing in a way that left them uninhibited. 
and I thought it was beautiful. And ever since then, I have just admired people who use tools like that to, to augment. It's, I, I, thought, I thought it was hiding before, and now I just realize that it's just, uh, it helps people become more comfortable with, with t it's like training wheels or something, you know. Um, it's, it's helping you to become more comfortable in the next version of who you are. And then eventually, you know, like I was using auto tune for a while and now I'm like, Oh, you know, I, I don't actually, I mean, I might still need it, but I'm not using it because I, I actually just like the way my raw vocal sounds now, but sometimes I'll turn it on and, you know, and I like it. And then of course there's all these other things with technology and Ableton live and controllers from, you know, things like Cliff X, which I use to change the key on my push when I'm performing live, um, to, you know, arpeggiators. If you're not a great keyboard player, you can use an arpeggiator to create sounds to, you know, putting a plug in on the keyboard to create all the notes in a certain scale or a chord or, you know, there's just so many tools right now that are amazing and awesome for innovation and creativity, but also to, help you realize that you don't need to be the best, you know, at all these things. Like mm. uh, people have these limiting beliefs, especially, you know, Americans. I hear a lot of times I can't sing. Oh, I can't sing. Oh no, I'm, I'm a terrible singer. Mm. I'm this or that. And other cultures, they don't have that issue. They all sing. Everyone's singing because they're not judging themselves. So I just really encourage the people that I work with and just any, anyone that I come into contact with to just, open up and, and be okay with maybe not sounding the best or be okay with using a tool, a piece of technology to help you overcome that limiting belief or to augment a way that you um, felt originally about something. So it's an exciting time to have all these tools at our fingertips. Yeah. I, I I've shared some of those beliefs. Uh, with auto tune was one until I tried it myself and I was like, Oh wait, <laughs> It sounds awesome. <laughs> this is fun, yeah. <laughs> and, and I've found it even handy for like writing melodies, vocal melodies, just because, you know, like it, it helps you hit the notes and it helps you figure it out. And, and sometimes there are certain songs that sound kind of like have an interesting emotion when you put an auto-tune in a robotic kind of voice. It has a kind of like like a cold emotional feeling that is hard to get in another way and so I, it, it it is really because people get into these like these uh debates and these yeah they have these like moral stands on what tools are acceptable yeah um, but there you know if you want to take that there, there's some memes somewhere where somebody has this idea where it's cheating if you do this it's cheating if you do that well it's mm -hmm. it's cheating if you um you know, don't make your own skins for your drum. So then it, oh, it, right. it ends and he's like a goat herder. <laughs> oh, I read the goat farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that one. <laughs> you can take that. Out. Yeah, I love that one. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, if you follow that train of thought to its end, it's, right. it's in a bad place. R totally. And, you know, a lot of people will ask me like, well, so do you program Max for Live? And, you know, do you do you write in Max? And, and, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't because I know that it would take me forever to just learn how to, to make the things that it's taking some other person who's been doing this for many years. They already know how to do it. So I'm going to hire yeah. them to, to make the thing for me. I, I don't need to go down that rabbit hole, you know? And, and so yeah. uh, I think collaboration is just key and, so many respects. I mean, I, I very much used to try to do everything on my own. And now I try to collaborate as much as possible because there's a lot of people out there that can do things better than I can <laughs> mm. and quicker and in, in, in quicker time. So we move faster when we collaborate. Yeah. And you just can't do everything. That, that's what I no. kind of landed in the same place with Max for live. It's like, there's a lot of people doing a lot of cool stuff and yep. uh, there's only so much I can do and do well. And, and I'm not, particularly interested in learning it anyway no <laughs> me either yeah um i mean kudos to those people that are like yeah. I, I love you thank you so much for <laughs> for spending the time in your room hours on end well, some you know. people love that you know yeah it, it's it's a puzzle it's problem solving i i can totally understand it 
mm-hmm. but um I, I just don't want to do it myself <laughs> yeah agreed same <laughs> i want to make some fat beats <laughs> yeah i want to cut to the chase right <laughs> yeah yeah I, you know people probably say that about things i do and things you do like i don't want to do that and that's yeah. that's fine let me, I'll take care of that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's interesting. Like the older that I get, the more I realize how it's okay to be multifaceted and have different interests, but then also like have really rooted in, okay, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. Like, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Hmm. And a lot of that has to do with just focusing in on what brings me joy and becoming more aware of that. And, doing a lot of, um, yeah, just a lot of work surrounding that. I did this process called the joy money matrix last year. That was really life changing for me. Joy money, the, the joy money matrix. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I actually became a facilitator in it and, um, I'm going to start incorporating it into transmute and my programs, but, uh, it's like a couple day workshop where you just lay out everything that you do in your life. Like, from hobbies to Mm. things that make you money and um, just really analyze these things and you arrange them on this matrix essentially that uh, the the cross sections are joy and money and you just get really real with yourself and and you look at what the things that are ultimately that are bringing you the most joy and the most money are what you would like them to be and then focus on those things Mm. and then the things that aren't bringing you joy and aren't bringing you money you either don't do them or you delegate them so you either dump them or delegate them to someone else and i just cleared a a lot away from what i was doing because of this process and um, just became just really crystal clear about who i am and what i want to focus on Nice. Yeah, that, that's a good yeah. way to think about it. So I, I find myself Absolutely. sometimes getting involved in things and I'm I'm like, why am I doing this? I know I don't like this, yeah. but it's like, <laughs> you know, it comes your way and you just jump on it. Yeah. But, yeah. We all, we, we say yes. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I, yeah. I, I like to, I don't know if this is a quote or just something I heard, but uh, when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to other things. And I, I right. try to remember that. Like if I say yes to this, like that's, um, I'm saying no to say making some music that I wanted to get to. Right. I, I think I've heard the opposite or more so the opposite. Like when you say no to something, you're saying yes to mm-hmm. something else, you know, like, cause I find that I get my schedule, it gets really packed and busy and, there's a lot of people that, you know, hit me up for various different things and I can't do it all. And so when I say no to something, then that leaves space in my life for the, the things that I really want to do. And I think just with our goals, you know, when we set our goals, it's important to just remember why, you know, why we set those goals and to just like continually remind ourselves of them because it's easy to set a goal like you know at the beginning of the year or whenever and then life happens and people come by and ask you to do this or that and certain things you of course you have to do but then other things you have the choice whether or not and to do them and now I just run everything through this funnel of like my joy money matrix and Mm. it's like okay is this aligned with with where I'm going and who I want to be um, if it's not, then I'll pass on it. Um, yeah. or, you know, I will, um, give it to someone else or I just shift it in a way. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's cool. It's a good way yeah. to think. Yeah, definitely. So you've got another one, another, um, session or, um, an intensive kicking off mm. even sooner than, than the, the transmute. transmute accelerator. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's it's called the Creative Business Intensive, and this, this is has got to be really timely, I think, for a lot of people that are trying to figure out what they're doing, right? Like, like yeah. in this moment, spring twenty twenty. Right. I mean, honestly, that's why I created it um, and wanted to offer it first, and I wanted to make it really accessible for people to join. So anyone can join the first uh, day for free, like anyone at all. 
you don't have to pay anything. You can just join. And uh, the first day is all about your vision and your values and mapping your lifestyle and a lot of the stuff that I was just talking about with the, with joy. Mm. And so I try to distill down like this couple of day workshop process into, you know, a couple of hours, but so anyone can join that. And then, um, if you want to continue on, um, there's three more days with uh, different various guests that I have coming in talking about, uh, things like sales and marketing and business plans and financial planning. And so it's really, um, mindset. It's really just like, a like it says an intensive for artists to artists and creatives to, to hone in on what they want their next step to be with their business. And, mm. um, and so anyone who's doing transmute actually can do uh, CBI, um, as a, it's a free bonus. Um, so they're getting like a, t- a two for one, which is, which is super cool. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, as soon as this, um, COVID situation hit, I started doing different master classes on business and creating your courses and live streaming and just all these different topics. And where I was asking people, what do you need? What do you need? What do you want to know? What do you want to learn? And through discussing and, and helping people, I put together the program. So it's, it's literally like an experiment. It's definitely a beta version and it's going to be, um, become a part of transmute, uh, later on down the line, but it's, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's on, it's of course it's on zoom. Everything's on zoom and, um, we'll be meeting as a class and a bunch of amazing creatives are already enrolled and, and you don't need to be a musician or an artist or, um, really even a creative to, to join. I mean, I, most of my audience are creatives, but, um, it's really just for, for anyone who wants to seek more clarity and, uh, their, their lives and, and design the next phase. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's CBI and, and transmute and got a bunch of other, you know, master classes and stuff coming up, um, that are all on my website on the connect page. Mm-hmm. Nice. We keep them busy. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and helping yeah. too, which is cool. You know, it's, uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, I, I'm I'm excited to see like where the, what starts to happen, you know, because I think like so many people mm-hmm. now are in this kind of like figuring it out mode. We're putting things yeah. together, coming yeah. up with ideas and and working on them. So I think we might see like uh, you know, maybe it'll be like a, a footnote in the history books of like some sort of like creative uh, you know, swell that happens as a result of all of what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, like I said before, this is a time for opportunity. It's an opportunity for everyone to, to shift. And if we can just look at it as a, as a gift uh, as much as possible, I know that a lot of people are going through some challenging, tough times right now. And, um, you know, I definitely, just feel for anyone who is a first responder and who's, you know, working at the the hospitals the nurses, the doctors, everyone that's, um, putting their lives on the line for this, uh, this virus, you know, um, and just want to help support people as much as possible. Actually, um, my company electronic creatives put together a fund, um, for Los Angeles musicians who, were affected by COVID and, um, we've raised quite a bit of money so far. Uh, we're going to distribute it, uh, to people who have applied for the fund. So, mm. um, if you're in Los Angeles and you, um, find our fund, it's on GoFundMe, you can definitely apply. So, um, you know, we've also have a help hub on our website with resources that, um, people can uh, utilize just all different kinds of grants and, you know, funds and things that, that people can access and information about all the SBA loans and uh, the payroll protection, which I've become very familiar with over the past couple mm. of weeks, being a small business owner and um, just really jumping into just learning about the stimulus and everything that's happening. But, um, you know, I just try to share as much of that knowledge as possible. And, you know, EC, the, my company, we're trying to still, still do things is, um, you know, it's kind of 
like I said, all the, the, the shows went away, but we're staying active as, as a company and we've got our master track worldwide, as you mentioned um, earlier, that's going to be in June. Um, so master track is our playback program. And we've had a couple of iterations of that. It's usually live in person in LA and it's for anyone who wants to learn how to be a playback engineer on tour. And uh, of course, since COVID hit, uh, we're not able to do that in person, but we are going to be having it online on Zoom. Mm. So we will be hosting that in June if anyone wants to apply for that. There's, we're definitely having all, all sorts of scholarships for you know Transmute as well as uh, Master Track, and we have a women's scholarship for Master Track that we. Um, for the, the live in-person event, which is now moved to the fall. And so we're granting one uh, full ride to a woman or a woman identifying individual for the program. So, nice. yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I haven't trained very many women and, and um, there's not many that are actually touring, um, doing playback engineering. So, um, you know, really it's a, a focus of mine to, to show other women that uh, you that they can get into this work and and be in this field and it's 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 okay mm. um you know because i think just not having not seeing other women in this role you know um it can be challenging you know to not have that support and for many years i mean i was the only woman that i knew doing this job and um and so I think I think now more so than ever, there's more support for women to to enter into playback engineering or whatever kind of you know um, world that they want to if they want to tour they want to whatever front of house and monitors. I mean, it's just great. Like organizations like Sound Girls are out there and um, Wham and just a bunch of um, amazing amazing people that are supporting women. It's nice to see. Um... I, I mean, I look at my YouTube statistics, for instance, and it's like yeah, 98% male, 2% women, which is, I think, going up, honestly, um, which is nice. But I'm, I'm starting to see it change in my high school with my after-school music production program, getting a lot more, many more girls are coming to the meetings, where it's, it's like half and half now. Well, when when we were having meetings and i yeah. think i think that's great to see that like um you know like these are like possibilities for you if regardless of who you are and how you identify and all that stuff is like you know shouldn't be a factor and it's nice to see that that that's happening and um i'm sure you're a huge part of that you know being behind so much of what's going on in the live show world so it's it's a good thing um and it's nice to see it's cool Absolutely. that you're doing that too with the scholarships supporting yeah that. yeah i encourage anyone listening to apply um because it's it's actually going to be in um the fall now so there's there's plenty of time yeah. to apply for the for the live event we're still going to host the um the online event which is going to be like a a warm-up for the live event but there's nothing quite like the live event because we get everyone in a room and we do this thing called hot seat and we have people go up and we simulate like you're on tour and um, the artist or the musical director or someone is asking you to make edits and make changes on the fly and uh -huh. it's super fun. I mean, you could do that on Zoom for sure. Yeah. We could still do that on Zoom, but there's, it's it's really fun to, to do it in person. Also, the gear building is the, the, the main yeah. thing that you can't, can't do on Zoom together, you know. Right, so, right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know you're you're pretty well versed at that. <laughs> Last second changes. <laughs> oh my experience. gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I was doing a live stream yesterday on Eventide's site and mm -hmm. uh, uh, their Instagram, and I was using this program called Yellow Duck for the first time, which allows you to stream I from OBS. I downloaded that. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it works. It yeah. works. Nice. Yeah. So, um, but. I was having some issues at first and um, and it was just kind of, I was down to the wire. I was like having some issues with actually my loopback software where hmm. it wasn't working and the sound wasn't coming through. And then all of a sudden 
I didn't change anything and all of a sudden it started working kind of thing. It just like ghost in the machine. But I, I was on with a friend of mine on, on zoom, you know, like, like sound checking on zoom and like yeah. pre <laughs> doing everything in advance and asking him, how does it sound? And, and then all of a sudden it, it started working and I was like, Oh my gosh. But I, I was joking around that I felt like, you know, like at, the shows that I used to do would be like 20,000, 30,000 people, 500,000 people like at Glastonbury and shows like that, at festivals like that. And so it was kind of funny because I, I felt like that same kind of like rush of energy, like, oh my gosh, I'm on in five minutes and yeah. like, it's not working. What do you do? You know? <laughs> yeah. And, um, but of course <laughs> it's a lot less lo low pressure stakes because, you know, on the internet, like, no one's gonna well people can call you out but if, if you don't actually start streaming then yes, <laughs> they're not right. gonna call you out <laughs> versus if you're in the middle of a show and like something goes wrong and it sounds wrong then um then it's on you but well i yeah, think was, on the live kind of stream fun. people have a, an understanding and oh my gosh you can blame yeah. it on the internet connection a little bit and <laughs> totally yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had that too, though, starting some live streams where yeah. I'm like all ready to go. I got this all yeah. set up. And then they'll they'll tell me like, oh, you, you can't use OBS. You're going to use this. And I'm like, oh, like right. what? What? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, just yeah. finally got everything going. and Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally like just minutes away. And, and uh, yeah, it's kind of funny because I, I use an iRig Pro Duo for my... Um, iPhone to get better quality audio when I stream on, on Instagram. But I used it two days ago on my own Instagram and the sound was cutting out. And so I was like, wow, well, I can't have that happening on, you know, even tides in Instagram because they asked me to be a guest artist and come on. And, and I just realized, well, I'm either going to have to just use my phone which would be fine as we discussed earlier, but being the audio professional that I am, you know, I really want the sound to be good. So yeah. then I was like, well, the only other choice that I have is to try this untested yellow duck mm. software, you know? So anyway, but it ended up working, which is great. I was, I was very pleased with myself. It was like, it was That's like a cool. moment. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you don't want to be the, uh, <laughs> you know the represented artist trying to show people like how to do it you know yeah. like, all right holding your yeah, phone yeah, out yeah. <laughs> right yeah 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 totally yeah. this is how this is what the effect sounds like oh wait you can't hear it <laughs> all <laughs> it you can hear is like my violin garbage like everything that's right now. <laughs> yeah because well because the violin <laughs> takes over the audio i mean mm -hmm. it's just so loud you know yeah so if if you don't have it going through a sound card then it's just gonna kind of take over oh, the sound I see, but yeah. they'll just fill your room <clears throat> yeah you'll just yeah. hear dry violin no one mm -hmm. wants to hear just dry violin <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah it was cool to figure that out and you know on these the certified trainer meetups that we've been having i mean i encourage anyone who's listening to to come check us out on saturdays at 11 pacific and we are li like we are going deep with the tools you know everyone on there has got some other idea and some other process they're using and some other software. And there's just so many tools out there that are amazing to just level up your live streams and your sound and everything. And so it's, it's a cool time because everyone's, everyone's online trying to figure it all out. You yeah. Know? Do you yeah. make those notes public? The, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so actually if you go to my YouTube, um, you can see the last two that we've done. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I the one I got on, uh, when I looked at the notes, I was like, "Whoa! Like this is oh, no yeah, joke! Yeah, like you guys are oh, really yeah. We're documenting going deep. everything." Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We, you know, I started these things. I mean, for the community and also for me selfishly because I'm like, <laughs> I want to know all this stuff. I want to figure it all out. So we're all just figuring it out together. And that's, that's the beautiful part of it. But yeah, I've got, you know, I did this live streaming um, masterclass a few weeks ago and I have this huge document that I compiled of like all different kinds of resources from hardware to software to 
you know, tools and uh, ways to set things up and methods and streaming from OBS to Zoom or, you know, Zoom to Restream or, you know, mm. Zoom to YouTube or like just all these different ways you can go about streaming and Twitch and Facebook, you know, all the, all the, all the different ways. And so I put together this resource document and uh, it's being shared pretty widely around right now. Uh, every time I go on it, there's massive amounts of people on it. So it's, it's pretty cool. Cause I just, every time I find out something new, I just go add it to that doc and just, mm. you know, yeah, I think I had a look at that and it has basically the entire internet's knowledge on live streaming in one place. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does. So if anyone's listening here that w wants that document, you can shoot me a DM or um, something on, on Instagram and I'll send it to you. Yeah, it's, it's super fun. Hmm. Super fun to collect the knowledge. Yeah, I, I know. And the video thing has always been the, like the part of all this that, uh, just i can't get into you know it's just it's the lighting it's it's the everything um the editing i it's yeah that's yeah. low on my joy matrix right <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i like doing things live like mm. I, uh, one of my coaches she has this this test called um your content personality test right and it's you know are you live in person? Like you just like being live in person. You like doing video. You like doing audio. You like written people. Everyone's a different one. Right. And I'm just live in person. You know, I just like to be, you know, hanging out, which is why I love moderating the CT hangs and, um, doing podcasts and just talking to people. Cause I just love riffing and, and mm. talking about concepts and ideas. And then some people really just love going deep with, you know, recording video and editing it and making it perfect and putting it on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Um, some people really like doing podcasts and just doing the audio part of things. And then some people like to write blogs. And so it's, it's interesting once you find out like what your content personality is now, I'm like, okay, I just know that this is the way that I like to do things, which explains why I like to do things like transmute and, you know, some of these other programs. Cause I just like to be live with people and, you know, working on things. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, would I you say that your that audio too. I'm sorry. Would you say that you're audio since you're you're doing the podcast or? Um, I don't know. Um, cause uh, as a high school teacher, I'm yeah doing live in person every day, right? Right. So yeah. um, I think I feel pretty good in those situations. Yeah. Which um took some time. You know, I do remember vividly the first time I had to ever speak in front of a class. I was, yeah. I was not ready. I was student teaching and the teacher's like, you want to say a few words about yourself, Mr. Funk? I was like, <laughs> to them? <laughs> now? <laughs> no? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But, but you know, you, it's, you do anything enough and um, yeah. you yeah. find a comfort in it. So yeah. I, I, I like those things. That's one thing like live streaming or doing like a workshop or something. I, I, I do feel pretty good once I know the technology is working okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the podcast for me is kind of live in person. And even, even when it's the ones I'm doing by myself, I'm kind of like, it's almost like I'm lecturing in school or something. Yeah. So totally. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I don't like going back and editing the videos. And <laughs> no, no, me I either. Just don't want to yeah, do no. that. Like I already did it, you know, yeah. like, I'm ready to move on. And yeah. Same same yeah i've done some video tutorials for some websites and you know they want you to edit everything very carefully and mm -hmm. i just realized no nah. i mean now i have uh, luckily i have people that i can hire to edit, edit things for me but i just like to do it in one take and just kind of move on generally yeah uh, polish same, it up later. same that was actually what i was thinking of when i was talking about uh <laughs> saying yes to things and then why am i doing this yeah it's, it's, yeah uh, you know like uh I, I can do the video, but like if, as soon as like the revision comes in, I'm like, oh, like, I don't want to go know, back to that. I know, you're like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You actually reminded me of something when you, when you said Mr. Funk, uh, 
we both had name changes kind of yeah, from yeah. our from our aliases back to our names unbranding in the last couple of years <laughs> unbranding yeah <laughs> how does it i've been curious how does it feel for you i mean yeah I, I, this is something i wanted to ask you about too um uh, i cool. love it i love it um i've been wanting to do this since day 1 <laughs> really um, yeah so it's just been a building up for a long time for me and mm-hmm. Um, as soon as I did it, you know, I was from the beginning, I was afraid that if I changed what I'm calling myself to something else, everyone's going to forget about me. And, you know, I I had like 50 people on my email list now. So, you know, I, I can't lose (laughs) this. And then it grows. I'm like deeper in the hole and I'm like, well, I should do it now before it gets better and bigger. And, and I finally, yeah, I don't know if it was last year. I think it was was last year, about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, just just dropped it and um it's so much better. And and the weird yeah. thing for me was I thought that having sort of like an alias and like hiding behind a name yeah. was going to make me feel more free. Me and, too. But it didn't. It it actually did the opposite. And as soon as I like got out of that, I'm like, well, now that I'm me, I can just do whatever I want. And it's not like this thing that I'm doing. And all this is in my head too, which is the funny part. Like no one cared or even blinked an eye. No, no. I I felt pretty much the exact same way. I think I was more focused on what other people would think because uh, I have a career as a professional in Mm -hmm. the music world. And I also had an artist career. And I just wanted to keep the lines, you know, separate. I wanted people to follow me because of my music. And then I wanted my professional career to be separate. And then just more and more things started bleeding together. And I was like, man, like, you know, some people are calling me Alux and some people are calling me Laura. And like, you know, what am I calling myself? And, you know, who, like, who am I? And, And I realized that the compartmentalizing was just not not working for me and I was working with a coach at the time and I actually just gotten done with the Byron Katie retreat and I came back to LA and I was like yeah you know oh it's gonna be so much work to just unbrand like you said and just go back to my name and because I'd gone by my name my whole life right except for you know eight years ago or something I'd changed to Alex so I was like okay I'm gonna have to like change everything and my coach was just kind of like, well, what are you waiting for? You know, like, just do it, like rip the bandaid off and just do Mm -hmm. it. And, and I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm ready to just be my authentic self and, and come out from kind of like behind the curtain, like you said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so um, I think I changed back to my name in 2018 now. So it's been like two years it's been great. You know, I've, I haven't looked back at all. I mean, there's been a few times where like fans of mine from before, like will message me and be like, what happened to Alux? Like Alux was so cool. And you know, I had this whole character and I was like wearing these outfits and like doing these things, you know, and it was like great for that time. And I was making a certain style of music. It was very stylized and I just I don't have the energy for that anymore. I'm yeah. just like just got to be who I am and, you know, wear what I wear and, you know, do my thing and so it's it's really cool. Um but yeah, a couple yeah, there there are some fans out there that are still like what happened to Alux? Like we want Alux back. <laughs> but for the most part, everyone, you know, has embraced the the name the name change, the the unbranding. Yeah. It's yeah. so much less to explain. I know it, it's it is. Um, yeah, I saw uh, Jerry Seinfeld live stand up a couple of years back. Mm. It was so funny. It was hysterical. I was laughing so hard. I felt like I was going to get thrown out for laughing too hard. <laughs> but he was talking about his show, um, comedians in cars getting coffee. Oh yeah, and he's like. I called it that so I don't have to tell people what it's about. <laughs> and like, uh, I was like, it's so, it's so good. Like it just that's smart. things don't need to, they shouldn't need to be explained. Yeah. It should just be what it is. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm with you on that. Like, I remember when yeah. you did it. You did it a little bit before I did, and I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. This is what I want to <laughs> do, but I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, when you develop a brand under that name, yeah, you worry like, are people going to fall off? And they're not going to follow me anymore. Are they going to be confused? Because you know, as much as people in the industry know me as Laura, there's a lot of people out there that don't even know my real name or didn't know my real name because they just knew me as Alex, this, you know, producer, yeah. artist person. So, um, you know, but I, I got over that fear, you know, I ripped the bandaid off and like I said, and yeah, it's been, it's been great because, you know, I've just embraced the fact that I am a multifaceted person and I am doing different things. I mean, it's all in a similar vein. I mean, it's like music and technology and, but just kind of integrating myself as a professional and as an artist. Um, I mean, I've gotten booked more. I've been doing, been more active. I've, I've been getting to speak more and it, you know, all of that I think just came from me just, synthesizing myself into one package <laughs> rather yeah. than splintering off so it's yeah cool. i think so like for me it was a little bit of like trying to hide my like music life from like my teaching life yeah um, yeah just because um you know I, I, it's just a lot to explain. I didn't want the phone call to come in. I was like, I don't know about my kid with that rock and roll teacher. Uh, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> um, you know, little things like that. But like the yeah. students were the first ones to figure it out. So yeah, it was like, I'm sure they think it's so cool, huh? Well, it's like, what's the point? You know, like, yeah. Um, Man, if I had a teacher like you, I would be stoked. <laughs> I try to make it fun. <laughs> and you know that's yeah. something I miss right now. It's like it's yeah. a lot harder to do that because uh, yeah. we don't do face to face meetings at all. Like mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's something we can ask students to do if um, mm -hmm. you, you know equipment wise. What if yeah, your parents right. need the computer and you have a brother that also has school at that time? Like how yeah. do you allow that? So yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, it is. It's it's much nicer to just. It, it actually helped me incorporate some of like my music stuff into my work at school, like doing a, a club after school and it just felt more cohesive. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things I think <laughs> uh, only really mattered to me <laughs> in the end. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was a good decision. Well, to, yeah. And plus you have a, your last name is the coolest <laughs> but it's also a musical genre so right. I, that was the reason I know. why it's i've so always cool. avoided it because uh, right i i don't yeah. want it to be like i'm doing funk music because i'm not yeah, yeah 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 um so i don't know but you know it's such a cool last name though it really <laughs> is it's just like who else's last name is funk like <laughs> there's a few of us out there <laughs> I, I mean i'm sure but like still <laughs> in music <laughs> yeah that's like one of those things you just uh it becomes part of the thing you deal with yeah anytime you introduce yourself like you know um, yeah hey so. <laughs> so, that's awesome yeah i mean my last name is not it doesn't roll off the tongue quite as easily and people are like can't even pronounce it so so that was one of the things for me too because i was like well people can't even pronounce or spell my last name. How are they going to find me? But, yeah. you know, got over that as well. Yeah, you Thankfully. know what? Um, it, it, it's like uh, I thought about this a lot. Like a lot of like the names, even like band names. Yeah. After I hear them for the first time, I don't even think about what they mean anymore. No. It's just like yeah. the, the word that we use to identify that thing. They're, they're all arbitrary, really. They're just sounds. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy Here that's we are. over. <laughs> I know. Here we are. <laughs> All yeah. these years later. Yeah. It's fun. And I think we're about the same age, too. So it kind of like, you know, makes makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 time to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all grown up now. <laughs> At least to my the degree I'm willing to. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, to a certain extent. <laughs> yeah. 
So you've got some cool stuff going on. We've got the Transmute Accelerator. We've got the Creative Business Intensive, then the Master Track to follow. And on your site, you've got a, a bunch of um, different events coming up. Um, oh, you're doing like a weekly one uh, on Thursdays. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I didn't see I'm that. Doing a, yeah, I'm doing a weekly live from home cool. um, performance. Um, yeah, which is super fun. Just like me and my studio tinkering with my violin and synths and all the gear. And so, yeah, that's on Thursdays at 7 Pacific and... Yeah, just trying to trying to keep active and also still get outside and <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, good. Keep, get some fresh air and you know yeah, it's get important. Out, uh, yeah, be off in. the screen too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's nice. It's nice that we can connect, but it's it's important to <laughs> get out and disconnect. Also, yeah, yeah because Absolutely. it's so uh, it's so weird right now. It's it's very easy to lose your grip on reality. <laughs> It really is. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, so we'll send people to lauraescude.com. Um, Escude, I'll just spell yeah. it. It's E S C U D E. Yep. Dot com. And um, I don't know. Anything else you want to tell the people that may be listening? <laughs> uh, thanks for thanks for listening. Uh, just uh, stay stay healthy and take care of yourselves during this time and stay connected and, um, and reach out. If you have any questions for me, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram. I try to, uh, message everyone I can back and just answer any questions. Um, yeah. Nice. That's pretty much it. Well, cool. Laura's here to help you guys. So take advantage of yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you all for all right. listening. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Take care. Bye.